this. Um, in Virginia, uh, we're still in the 1760s going into the 1770s, and so we have this guy uh, that we talked about, Samuel Harris, who has come up into Virginia, and uh, he has been this prolific evangelist, and churches are being birthed everywhere in Virginia, and the, the religious climate is changing, but there's 45 Baptist preachers sitting in jails, and uh, what's going to happen is there's going to become this group of Baptists who are kind of born into this persecution and this moment in time uh, where they're going to realize that if we all band together, we can accomplish more with our legislature. And uh, they're going to actually accomplish a series of victories in the legislature. There's, uh, there's a, a religious liberty clause added to the preamble the, of the Virginia Constitution. They're going to fight for that. Then they're going to actually fight for uh, a, a law, an ordinance to be passed. That's a religious liberty ordinance. That's going to come a little bit later. But then after uh, the war is won and the Constitution is ratified, uh, they're also going to fight uh, the state church clergy who are trying to hold on to all the, all the property. And that's kind of uh, couched in the, the, the name of a, a non-incorporation battle. That And the Baptists won that because they believe that because all the monies of all the peoples who didn't believe what the state church believed, were used to pay for all these exorbitant amounts of property and give these ministers lavish lives, that all that stuff should be given back to the people. Well, the, uh, the state church ministers and clergy, they sued to be able to keep all that land in their control. And, but there was a series of victories that were going on. And here's kind of how it happened. So uh, when you have Samuel Harris come up in, one of the first guys to get saved is a guy by the name of Lewis Craig. And uh, I hope I don't speak too fast. Bear with me. Uh, I can go 90 miles an hour with this stuff. So Lew Lewis Craig, uh, he's going to pastor what is known as the Upper Spotsylvania Baptist Church. And that's going to be south of Culpeper in the northwestern part still there of Virginia. Lewis Craig's an interesting individual. When he gets arrested, uh, he, is, he gets saved by the grace of God, called to preach, begins to preach, gets arrested. He's one of the first that get arrested in Virginia that we have a record of. But as these men are being taken through the streets of the Fredericksburg Jail, they sang a song to their captors, and the song went something like this. Broad is the road that leads to hell, and many there be which go in thereat. Narrow is the road which leads to life, and few there be that find it. Uh, but these men were put in the jail, and this was that interesting occasion. I won't give you the whole speech, but the, the interesting occasion was that Patrick Henry heard of the plight of the Baptist, and then it's well documented that he rode 60 miles on horseback, and pro bono, he defended them in court. And so the great orator of the revolution stood up, and uh, as he began to speak, uh, and if you know anything about Henry, by the way, the way you learn about Henry is you go to the, the church there in uh, Richmond, Virginia, where he gave his famous speech in the parish church there, and uh, you know the give me liberty or give me death speech, and they, they have a guy there that reenacts him. And so what would happen when he would speak is he would bring you way down low to a whisper. We had to really listen. And boom, he'd start talking real loud, and people would jump back, and, and he'd kind of grade on your nerves, and he was able to persuade people in that fashion. When you sit and hear that speech reenacted, it's pretty amazing. We was in the courtroom, and he gave one of the most excellent dissertations on the idea of what, what our forefathers actually came to this country for and what the Baptists came here for. And he talks about how the first uh, steps they took in the American wilds, uh, the, the chains of despotism should have been broken, and heaven decreed that man should be free. He went on to say, free to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. And if it were not so, in vain were all the persecutions and all the sufferings and all the strugglings. In vain was, you know, and he just went on. Him. But but at the time all of this was over, several times he paused, by the way, and he waved the indictment over his head and would lift his hands to heaven and he would shout, Great God! And uh, the judge would be rattled and, and the, the jury was over there wondering, uh, you know, what was going to happen. Everybody was on the edge of their seat. And when the whole thing came down to the end, uh, after several times of taking them high and taking them low and screaming at the top of his lungs, he said, uh, you know, he went on through his speech, and when it ended, the judge looked over and, and said that he looked ghastly and pallid as though his whole frame were irritated, and the prosecuting attorney stood there trembling at the voice of Patrick Henry, and all of a sudden, the judge looked at the state church constables and said, what are you waiting for? Discharge those men, and they released the men that day in court, and Patrick Henry went on to be one of those men, uh, like Roger Williams, who was not a Baptist, but was a great friend of the Baptist, and was a, a, a man of, of great intelligence intelligence in reference to civil governments and stood beside the Baptist. See, Henry was a Presbyterian by his uh, profession, but he was a great help uh, to your Baptist forefathers. Well, Lewis Craig was a, an amazing man. He sat in four different jails. When we did the Imprisoned Preachers tour, we called it that, produced a video on it, 
2011, it was interesting because we actually examined these men and it seemed like they were actually on the imprisoned preachers tour as they traveled because many of them sat in three or four different prisons just for preaching the gospel during the early 1770s building up to the revolution. Well, Lewis Craig did go to jail several times, but he decided that God wanted him to be a missionary to Kentucky. And uh, so he gathered all of his church, about uh, 200 and some people, and a bunch of other people. And this became known as the famed traveling church, about 600 of them. Who said they loved the Shenandoah Valley this week? Amen. Okay, yes, sir. And so they marched down through the Shenandoah Valley, amen. And you can follow the events of the traveling church, and they'll say, we forded this river, and then we slept under the trees at the foot of this mountain on this night. And they give the whole, and so 600 miles, about three and a half months, and, and uh, uh, 600 miles later, there's 600 people walked all the way down to a little place uh, called Abingdon, Virginia, uh, near where the big Bristol Speedway is. If you, if you know where that is, you might know. And then they crossed the Cumberland Gap, walked way up, and they started their first church at Gilbert's Creek there in Kentucky. Then Lewis Craig would go on to start churches all through Kentucky so that when the Second Great Awakening then swept through Kentucky later, there would be a lot of churches birthed there and ready for that awakening because they had been planted by those separate Baptists and others as well, William Hickman being one of the early pioneers and then John Taylor. But Lewis Craig was certainly instrumental in starting several associations and numerous churches where there were no Baptist churches in Kentucky. So I'm saying that to say the caliber of men that were getting saved under Samuel Harris was amazing in Virginia and most of them went to jail, at least to one jail. Let me tell you about another one. His name is John Weatherford.